Ciao ragazzi! This is Katie Portanova, and you're listening to Florence and Me. I'm a lover of stories and all things Italian, and I'm going to bring you all that in this podcast. My intention is to inspire you to step out of your comfort zone and explore life and travel the world. Join me as I tell you my story and many others about Italy and my love, Florence. Andiamo! Ciao tutti! It's Katie. We are back for another episode. It has been a while. I keep saying I'm going to drop one every week, and I do not. So, here I am back. And today we are going to talk about San Gimignano. San Gimignano is a city in Tuscany. It is a city known for its towers. Um, San Gimignano was one of the towns I visited when I studied abroad back in 2002. And I remember, the things I remember are um, quite funny, actually. Um, My friend Jenny and I, we decided, actually, it was probably more than one of us, but I remember Jenny was with us, and Angie, probably. We went to the Museum of Torture before we ate lunch, and that was a big mistake. <laughs> um, We did have a tour guide, I remember. Um, San Gimignano is a very tiny town, so it didn't take us that long. Probably it was just the morning we had this tour. Um, We went to the top of the tower, which I'll talk about. Um, where you can see this beautiful view of the Tuscan Hills. And then we decided to go to the Museum of Torture, the Torture Museum. And it was disturbing, to say the least. Um, And then we, I think all we did, all we ate that day was gelato. That was the only thing we could keep, we could eat and not feel sick to our stomachs. So that was really funny. Um... (laughs) So um, before I get into San Gimignano, I want to put out some news, some events that are coming up. Um, Those of you that signed up for our virtual wine tasting with Monteferrale, thank you. Um, We have eight of you, which is awesome, and it's going to be amazing. Um, And I can't wait to see you on May 15th via Zoom. And remember, I will be sending you um, an email with those three recipes to pair if you are a cooking type of person you'd like to cook. That is what you'll be getting. And those of you that missed it, maybe you're just tuning in now and you did not know I was doing a wine tasting virtually, don't worry, I will be doing more. I've got a lot of people interested and maybe not just with Monteferrale, maybe with others. I'm not sure. I'm still in the works of talking with other vineyards. And that's what me and Stefano will be doing in June. I have a lot of vineyards that I want to visit. Um, You know who you are. If you're listening, vineyards. (laughs) Uh, The other thing is I have a retreat coming up in September. It's September 24th through October 1st. Perfect time to come to Tuscany. Um, I have six spots. There are five bedrooms, three bathrooms. They all they are shared bathrooms, so there's no individual single bathrooms that you can have for yourself. Um, you are able to have your own room, though, if you don't want to share a room. So um, if you're interested in coming, um, all the details are on trulyitaly.tours um, with pricing and what we'll be doing. And the reason why I wanted to talk about San Gimignano is because we will be going there in September. And San Gimignano, I have yet, I don't, no, I have not been back since 2002, 2002, I'll be honest. Oh, no, 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 I lied. I took my sister there, Emily, there in 2013, I believe. Yes. Yes, we did, because we went to the top of the tower. I'm remembering right now. <laughs> I was thinking, wow, that was a long time ago. Um, so another tidbit, if you're, if you're cur- if you want to know, I, I just like to give you tidbits. Um, my in-laws actually got married in the town hall in San Gimignano. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. I can't wait to go back. There is a vineyard outside of San Gimignano that I cannot wait to visit. 
in June, and then we're going to visit it again in September. And their wine is to die for. All organic, biological. It's just, I can't wait. I can't wait to meet these people. So let's get on to it. All right. So San Gimignano was derived from the name of the Saint Gimignanus. Gimignanus. I think I said it right. A fourth century bishop of Modena. And, um, yeah, Modena. Modena, I'm going to go off on a tangent. <laughs> Modena is the town where my grandmother, my nana, used to go with her her mother, my bisnonna, um, for a trip because it was close to um, Farnesa, where she was living during the war. Um, so Modena was fun to visit. I visited that in 20... 20 when was that? 2007. 2007. Yes. Modena. Very nice town as well. Um, I am reading this from the Blue Guide Tuscany, in case anybody's curious. This is a really good guidebook if you really like a lot of history. And um, not so much like a guidebook like Frommer's or Rick Steves. It's more like a more knowledgeable, like a lot of history stuff. So I like this book. Um, it has Etruscan origin, San Gimignano, and was later inhabited by the Romans. In medieval times, it owned its prosperity in, to its position on the Via, let me say this right, Fraginia, hmm? Fragine. Ah! <laughs> I know this. I know how to say it. Hold on. Hold on. I sometimes, honestly, guys... I am, I'm not going to say I know all the words perfectly, okay? No, that's the American one. I'm, I'm doing Google Translate to say it right. Francigena. 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 Via Francigena is actually another, uh, um, this road that actually goes through where we'll be staying in September in Castel Fiorentino. This is, was like their pilgrimage road that people took um for commerce it was an important road for commerce the main pilgrim route to rome from northern and central europe um so if you come and visit or you come and stay with me in september the road via Fragi, fragigena <laughs> fragigena is goes right through where we are staying in via um on the road to v- villa antica sosta where we're going to be staying so it's kind of cool I'm just imagining people walking through with their carriages or horses or whatever it might have been that they would probably carriages, right? Um, It was known for, it was known as San Gimignano delle Belle Torri of the beautiful towers, that's what that means, Um, from the tower houses of its noble families, most, most of which were constructed in the 12th and 13th centuries. So they're there used to be over um, 76 traditional sh- towers over San Gimignano. 76, guys. But there are only 13 that have survived. Okay. Um, oh, Dante was sent here in 1299 as an ambassador of Florence to try to Attach the town to the Guelph League, which is a, a part of another part of um, there were the Guelphs. I'm not going to get into that because <laughs> I'm not remember. I'm not a history major. I don't know a lot about history. I just know certain things. I always like to make sure you guys know that. After the devastation caused by the Black Plague in 1348, San Gimignano came under the protection of Florence. And there was an artistic rival revival. Sorry. In the 15th century. However, the town declined commercially as a result of the deviation of the pilgrim route further east to the Elsa Valley, which is where Castel Fiorentina is, I believe. The town suffered some damage in the Second World War. Okay, so what I found out about the Second World War, something that I think, if you haven't watched this movie, you have to watch it. It's called Tea, A Tea with Mussolini or Tea with Mussolini. Lily Tomlin's in it. Um, I think Maggie Smith's in it. It's a really good movie, and it's it's around the time of World War II. I think it is, is the time of World War II. And there's all these um, English aristocrats that live in Tuscany and live in Florence. 
and they just have tons of money okay so imagine maggie smith always looks like she has a ton of money but like um so lily tomlin in the movie is protecting the um frescoes in the duomo of san gimignano which is not called the duomo it is called the collegiata collegiata um it is a beautiful church and i when i looked back at pictures um not my own, but pictures in, on websites and stuff. It is really beautiful because it is completely frescoed. And it still to this day was never, never had to be retouched. Um, even, um, yeah, because I, I think there was some damage, but they didn't, they didn't get bombed like, you know, Florence did during World War II. So it's a really sight. To, it's a really beautiful sight to see. If you're into the frescoes and stuff, there are some stories regarding the frescoes, which I can get into, um, but we'll move on. And then if we have time, I can talk about that. So there is a tower right next to the main church, the Duomo, that you can climb to the top. Now, I've totally lost where it actually, what's it called? I believe it is called... I have to find it. So this tower, when you get to the top, it's not like going to the top of um, the Duomo. It's not like 400 and so many stairs. Because I know some of us don't want to climb that many stairs, right? I hear you. So the, it is a beautiful, um, it is a beautiful climb. There are the stairs that go up are steel stairs, I believe. They're, they're not wooden um, I think they used to be wooden from what I read up on. So can you imagine? I mean, not that, you know, you would be afraid of like <laughs> falling through, but it's nice that they've actually made it. So it's like stable for everybody to climb up. Um, so let's see. This is my church. So let's go back to the church since I pulled up some of the notes that I put on for the church. Um, so, yeah, like I said, the fully fresco Duomo, which is the Collegiata, was which has never needed any restoration um so the colors that are on these frescoes are original and they were painted back in the 1300s it's it's incredible like there are some sections that you can see wear and tear um because San Germano was bombed but not like in extensively during World War II um so some parts of it I think you can see that maybe you can see the pieces. But again, if you don't know anything about frescoes, you're probably like, oh, my God, this is like it's just put on the wall. It's crazy. Um, so, yeah. And then I told you about the tea, tea with Mussolini, it's called. Um, I think you should really see it. If you've never been to San Gimignano, you should watch that. You'll you'll see the importance of the like Lily Tomlin's character is protecting the church. So you'll see them put sandbags in the movie. Um, I won't ruin the ending, but <laughs> actually, I don't remember the ending, so it doesn't matter. Um, she she puts sandbags on all the way up the wall to protect the frescoes in case they get bombed. So it's a really it's a really amazing story, um, especially if you're really into history and preserving the history that is amazing Italy, right? Everybody. Um, yeah. So oh my god, yeah, this church is just beautiful. I can't even, I can't even get on, get over how, how beautiful it is. And just imagine like uh, the, the talent people had to have back then to paint faces and people and, and it's just, and to fresco them. I mean, I, I still don't understand how they did it because it's not like watercolors or acrylics. It's like, it's a, it's definitely a big art piece, you know? So I think if any of you are interested in that type of stuff, I really recommend um, recommend going to that Duomo. Um, okay, so then I was going to talk to you about the Torre Grossa. That is the tallest tower, and that's that's what it's called, Torre Grossa. And you can't miss it. There's probably there's signs everywhere for it. I don't remember exactly where it is when you're looking at the Duomo, but I have a feeling it's to the left of the Duomo. If you're facing the Duomo, it's to the left. You'll see signs, and I'm sure everybody will be going up there. Um, yeah, so it is a beautiful view. I wouldn't recommend going to the Museum of Torture or the Museo della Tortura um, because it, yeah, I wouldn't. 
unless you're into that stuff, but I wouldn't. There are some really cool, um, which I didn't go to, but I've read a lot about, which I would be curious to go. There are some really cool museums to go to. Um, there is one that talks about, um, oh, how do I explain? It is, it is the Museum of 1300. I'm looking it up right now just to make sure. Oh, yeah. San Germano 1300. Okay, so this is a private museum. This is why I thought it was interesting because it's private. But I don't know if it's open when you do go. Um, So this is a private exhibit. Easy. Does not have an easy to see sign to its entrance. Just a large door with a standing poster inviting people to visit me at no cost. Okay, so that's a good sign at no cost. Um, once we enter, we surprisingly find ourselves in front of a miniature reproduction of the Castle Monterigione. Ooh, ca- Monterigione. Monterigione is another place I'd like to take people to. I've been there. I mean, Stefano went there once. It's near Asciano, where we vacationed one year. Um, really cool town. It's a walled in town. It's like a fortress. There's like a couple restaurants inside. Um, you can walk around the wall, I think, on the outside of the wall. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the actual exhibit, um, we follow Michelangelo as he leads us down and to the left and down again to a large stone wall room and special lighting, blah, blah, blah. Okay. In front of us, we see San Gimignano. How it would have appeared in the year 1300, so when those frescoes were done. And as a traveler, you would have uh, would have observed it from a nearby hilltop. The city, at, it, at its height of its development, showed at its 72 towers or 76, I read in... I, don't, I think I would go with um, Blue Tuscany on this one, Blue Guide Tuscany. Um, 76 towers um even if it was called city of a hundred towers or the of the beautiful towers which i said before um imposing and transmitting a sense of power and independence a point of reference in the tus in the tuscany of that time being situated on the via Fraci- fracigena 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 <laughs> the pilgrimage road that connected france to rome i didn't read that in my other book uh, made it possible for the city to prosper and become an important economic center with a population of 12,000. And today the population is 3,000. So, yeah. These small towns really have lost its luster for the young people because there isn't any jobs. And it's mostly, you know, touristy jobs, like working in shops, working in cafes, working in gelaterias, so, and working in the museum. So there's not really a lot of jobs. So I understand that. Um, but I'm just glad there's still people living there. Um, yeah, anyway, this sounds really cool. Like, so the picture that I'm looking at, it's, it, it looks like it's like a wooden version of San Gimignano that people are just walking around. Um, that's awesome. Now, this is, this is a really cool exhibit. I actually think I want to take people here because it's like miniature, miniature life, get to see like what they were doing back then out on the streets. Um, yeah. Cool. So yeah, that 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 is what I found with San Gimignano. Now, San Gimignano is a quite small town, so there's a main street that you would go you enter into. Um it's called Via San Giovanni, and right on that street, from what I remember, there are a lot of shops. So you will be bombarded with tourist stuff and everything. But what I suggest you do if you're interested in maybe eating somewhere that's not on the main strip, keep going. I don't know any restaurants off offhand, but like keep going further past the Duomo because that is not the area where all the tourists enter. So usually tourists kind of like stay in one area because they don't want to get lost. But San Gimignano is quite small. You couldn't get lost because you would run into the the walls on each, either side. So I think um, that's my that's my um, be like a local um, advice. So you aren't. Um, in a tourist trap or you're not, you know, eating just half-assed food, which happens in most of these places. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I believe a lot of the restaurants are delicious when you go into small towns like this, but you just never know. Okay. Especially if the menu is in English and most of the time it will be in these towns. I've said this before that, you know, try not to go to restaurants like in Florence 
Try not to go to restaurants that have English translations, but they're probably going to be there anyway, even in Florence and even in um, San Gimignano, because most of their visitors are English speaking people or don't speak neither, you know, French, Spanish, you know, this is what I'll say to help you with the tourist trap issue. If you see a menu with a bunch of different languages, like from Chinese, Japanese, French, German, uh, Swedish, uh, I don't know, then yes, don't go there. But if it has like English translation and that's it, I think you'll be okay. But again, this is just my opinion. I remember going to those that had a million different translations. I think it's just better if you try to go to the ones less um, trafficked. Like if you have, if there's a lot of people waiting outside, don't go there. I don't know why I went off on this tangent, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys don't, you know, end up going to a a bad place to eat because, because Italians right now, especially those in the tourist, uh, tourism uh, realm, they're really struggling. So I feel bad saying this, but like a lot of the people the least that I remember that owned these types of restaurants weren't Italian. The type of restaurants that have a lot that are tourist traps. Okay. So just be, be, be aware. And I, and I, yeah. So, okay. So that is it about San Giuliano that I can tell you, you know, in this podcast episode, if there's any other places that you guys want me to talk about or want me to give my opinion on, I would love to hear from you. So go ahead and email me at trulyitalytours at gmail.com. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it is a really cool town to see. Actually, from my mother-in-law's house, I, she pointed it out the last time we were there. I could see the towers really far away, but it was I could see them. And it's just a really cool sight to see. Um, when we were visiting um, another place to have my retreats in San Gimignano or near San Gimignano, you could see it really clearly, like on one of the hills, like the tower shooting out. Oh, it was just like a beautiful, oh, so beautiful. Tuscan Hills are my love. Love, love, love. Uh, let's see. What else? Is there anything else about San Gimignano? I mean, I'm sure there is. There's other, there's a lot of other museums there that I'm not really um, versed in. I just saw this one about 1300, San Gimignano in 1300. Um, thought that would be cool. I kind of like the ones that are like not really talked about. So this is something that I just found, which again, I never visited when I was a student. So um, yeah. So yeah, so that's about it, guys. Um, what else is going on? I, I just um, opened up my Truly Italy shop on my website. So I have some neighborhood guides for Florence. And what it is, is they're about between three to four pages. Um, They're PDFs that you can download for a cost. And they have um, things to see, things to do, and where to eat. And in each PDF, if you are carrying an iPad with you or when you travel, each PDF has hyperlinks to the restaurants and the the venues and the... um, and the uh, landmarks, museums that you can visit. Um, And some of them I actually, I think, linked like where you can buy tickets, like to to go up to the top of the Duomo. Um, So, and I actually went to the place that's for the city of Florence. So there are so many places online that sell tickets as like third parties for these things. I personally would rather go through the city of Florence. So... I made sure that I did that for you. Um, I have three neighborhood guides up there right now. So go ahead and check those out if you're interested, if you're traveling to Florence for the first time and you don't know where to go. These are places that I've been, um, places that I loved and places that aren't really on the, um, in those big books of travel and like Brick Steves and Frommers and all those other ones. I like to, I like to go kind of off the beaten path. So, um, I hope you enjoy that. I, let's see what else. I think there was one other thing I was going to say about something and I probably am going to forget it and I have, it's gone. So yeah, I am still able and willing to help anybody out there that needs help with their upcoming trips to Italy, to Tuscany. I have a lot of connections that I'm working on 
a network of people to help you make it easy for you to set up a villa to get a wine tasting in. I mean, as you can tell, like I am in in full on, I need to find as many vineyards I'd like to go visit. Um, so yeah, any questions, feel free to go to my website there to look up the click on trip consulting. And yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I gave you some of my insights about San Gimignano, what I like and what I don't like. Well, actually, mostly what I like, right? I didn't say anything that I don't like. And um, yeah, I think you could see San Gimignano in half of a, half a day. It's a small town, depending on how many museums you want to hit and how long you want to sit and have lunch. Um, I would say a half a day, maybe six hours, maybe four. Depends on what time you get there. So, yeah. Oh, so excited. Um, my next town I'm going to talk about on my next episode um, is Siena. Because I have some people that really like Siena and they want to know some knowledge about it, some information, some history. And Siena, I'll be honest, is one of the towns I have not visited since I was a student. So that's over 20 years ago. <laughs> I haven't visited. So I plan on visiting it this this September. So if you come with us, we are visiting Siena. Um, yeah. All right, guys. I hope you have a fabulous day. Or uh, as I always say now is um, buonasera, buonanotte, wherever you are. Or buongiorno. Maybe you're listening in the morning. And I will see you on the next podcast. Ciao, ciao. A presto. I am beyond grateful for you listening to my podcast right now. I am so excited to share my journey of living abroad and all my stories of Florence and Italy and all the places in between that I've visited. If this has reached you in any way and you would like to continue, please subscribe now. Also, go check out my website, Truly Italy. Dot tours for all my travel experiences. Ci si vede. Ciao.